Snestruck. Hello and welcome to part 4 of the Snestruck English Friendly Super Famicom game series. Not to be confused with the Super Famicom RPG series, sorry, still working on that one. This series highlights games of all kinds where you can just buy the Super Famicom cartridge and play it as is without knowing any Japanese. For example, in past episodes I've gone over everything from the Goemon series to Psycho Dream to Hyper Eria to Rendering Ranger R2 to Gundam Wing Endless Duel to Doremi Fantasy, which I just looked at in its own video last week. Big shout out to Ryuma King for the help with finding these games. He knows a lot more than I do, so big thanks to him. And once again, the way you play Super Famicom games in your NTSC Super Nintendo is to either break off the two tabs on the inside of the console, or break off the two tabs on the inside of a Game Genie and play through that. Or get something like a Retron 5 and make sure to have the software updated. Anyway, I've covered the Poppin' Twin Bee games in past episodes, but one game I forgot was Magical Poppin', a polished and streamlined 2D side-scrolling platformer featuring six wide-open stages with lots of exploring, items, upgrades, spells, power-ups, bosses, and hidden areas. This is going to be by far the best game on this video, so if you haven't played it yet, go check it out if you can. It is the total package and everything you'd want in a 16-bit platformer. Let's stay with platformers. Next there's Super Genjin 2 or Super Bonk 2. Bonk was of course a flagship franchise for the TurboGrafx-16, but he did eventually get his own original game on the Super Nintendo in Super Bonk. The sequel however stayed in Japan, and it's pretty good in that Bonk sort of a way. I think Super Bonk is better, but this game is alright. Next there is Ganbare Daiku no Gensan, or Hammer and Harry. This is a good beat em up style game with great pixel art and a distinct style to it. Longtime viewers may remember when I reviewed the Japan exclusive game this series had for Game Boy. This is essentially the Super Nintendo version of that game. I think the Game Boy version is better because there's more variety there, but still the core gameplay of Hammer and Harry is a great time. Kishin Doji Zenki Battle Raiden is a pretty good side scroller, but it's kind of flawed. The camera scrolling is wonky, and the short range of attack can be frustrating, but it's still a good game with some good ideas and a nice soundtrack that fits pretty well. Wagyan Paradise is a ridiculously bright and colorful side scroller reminiscent of Plock. It's an easier, more straightforward game. I'll say that if you have young kids that you want to get into gaming, this might be a good one for them to try out. The visuals and sound are pretty funny, and the game is simple enough. Nangoku Shonen Papua-kun is a very good platformer from Enix of all people. The controls take a bit of getting used to, and the game doesn't give you that much of a chance to get comfortable. This is a tough one. There's a leveling system in place though, so the game does allow you to grind to get stronger. Plus there's clear all attacks and boss fight after boss fight after boss fight. This is a quality title, but bear in mind, this game is very story driven, so there's a lot of Japanese you'll have to skip by to continue playing. If you're sick of side-scrollers by now, Super Ninja-kun is more of a pure platformer with levels that are more vertically built. There's nothing new or original here, same old stuff with throwing ninja stars, collecting power-ups, that sort of thing, and man, that soundtrack gets annoying quick. But this is still a solid game if you prefer a game of this nature over something like the last few games I just went over. Yokai Buster is one of my favorites on this list. The mechanics here are very Kirby-like. You carry around this gremlin-looking thing that sucks. No, literally, he sucks enemies. But instead of eating them, he spits them out to use as projectiles. He can also suck onto walls and ceilings to climb. And the level design does a nice job complementing these mechanics. If you like the Kirby games, you'll love Yokai Buster. Kaizo Shoujin Shobibimen Zero is a game that was a Satellaview exclusive. In other words, there was no cartridge made. The game was actually broadcast via satellite to your Satellaview software in Japan. I won't get into that crazy stuff in this video because I'm not even entirely sure how it worked. But anyway, Kaizo Shoujin Shobibimen Zero is like if you mix together Mega Man's visual style and soundtrack with beat em up mechanics and run and gun action. It's a fine piece of work. The only drawback is that you can only get it on a reproduction cart or play it on an emulator or a flash cart. But seriously, highest recommendation to play it if you can find it. Let's switch to fighting games. I'll go back to the Zenki series. Earlier I talked about Battle Raiden, Kishin Doji Zenki Dene Raibu. This is one of those goofy fighting games that takes kind of a detached perspective and puts the emphasis on visual style. And make no mistake, this game looks freaking great. Yu Yu Hakusho has a similar game like this and it plays kind of the same way. It's all about timing your attacks and blocks, and once you get it down, Dene Raibu is a pretty good fighting game. Fighter's History received a release in the US, but the sequel, Fighter's History Mizoguchi Ipatsu, was only released in Japan. There's nothing original here for sure. These games are like a combination of Street Fighter 2, World Heroes, and Dragon Ball Z, but if you're into 16-bit fighting games, this one is well done. 
And of course, I have to talk about Godzilla. Godzilla Kaiju Daikessen features eight playable monsters from the movies, and this game definitely has a different feel to it than most other fighting games. You can feel the weight and the strength of these guys. Yeah, they move slowly, but they do devastating damage, and it can be fun to pick up some of the special moves. Okay, let's get weird. Excelibrid is a game that long, long time viewers might remember me playing years ago in a drunken stupor. I was so messed up that I couldn't even remember the name of the game afterward and had to ask on Twitter. But yeah, as you can see, this game is hugely ambitious. I certainly appreciate what it tries to do, but it just doesn't do it all that well. The background is just way too pixelated. The aiming just doesn't work all that great, but hey, have a few drinks and squint a little bit and this game looks and plays way better. Sanrio Smash World Ball is a fun two-player game that's self-explanatory. It's like a handball kind of a thing, with cartoonish characters that I'm sure are from some franchise of some kind. I know Hello Kitty is involved. Still, it's a good multiplayer game with some very satisfying sound design. And last, I'll mention Nishibutsu Arcade Classics, a compilation cart which includes arcade classics like Moon Cresta, Crazy Climber, and Frisky Tom. And they appear to be faithful representations of these games as far as I can tell, so if you're into early 80s arcade classics, you gotta pick this up. Alright, that's all for now. I hope to do a part 5 with another 15 or 16 games sometime in the future, so I want to thank you for watching, and have a great rest of your day.